असतो सदमय असतो You're doing your inquiry, you're doing fine. You reach a certain point where you should stop and the mind says, yes, but who is doing that? It's unnecessary. It takes you back into the mind. <clears throat> there is something in that, that we are doing, you know? It's a <clears throat> the mind can be very cunning like that, in that way. But it's not that, it's not in the end of the day, you know what? You can say the mind is cunning, but it's you who fail. You understand? Yes. When I say to you, even the greatest salesman in the world cannot sell you something that you don't buy. And the mind is selling you everything that you've been buying, and you have to stop buying. And this is something like they are doing all this stuff, and they say, it's just finished, it's fine. Yeah, but something here, and they take you go all the way back out again, and so on. I said, we come back again to the beginning. That's why it's so important to listen to what you say. Yeah, and not just listen as just mechanically, but to see why I say. Yes. And go back and see. But you, did you understand that, or did you just not? You just do because I say that. You must understand also. That's a good point. That's a That's good point. That's where I keep going wrong. Oh. Yeah, because you know, it's like if I say do this thing, and no, 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 stop there. Don't do that. No. And you think, okay, I just stop because I was decided to do that. But uh, there are times when it is just like stopping, you stop and do nothing. You don't use the mind. There's time to say stop and try and understand why, why it was different. You know, not, you, can, you cannot be always the same, but you understand why. Yeah, I would yeah. say there's a moment when there's the understanding mm -hmm. is, uh, is not needed or it's like it's even not yeah. there. Maybe even yeah, because you maybe you, know, you, you have to learn to, just like the lesson might be just to drop something mm -hmm. and don't pick up anything. Another time is to also understand. You know, you understand why I say because, like in something like the inquiry, I say, then the mind comes and gives you another thing, and he said, then you may ask, but at what point does that happen, and how do you recognize it? And you know, it's a very subtle teaching to say. Then you know, there you have to, you come to a place and you're in emptiness. Don't be asking like you know. Okay, you may say, but. But the emptiness is also seen. Yes, the emptiness is also seen. Now, what is it seen? And then you say, you know, if you find that which is seen, then what is seen? That you've gone too far. It's like you go too far. You know, then it becomes mechanical, and you're just back in your mind. It's oh no, no, this, it just goes unending, un unending things. I said, no, it's not unending. Because you dropped into this slimy thing in the mind, and then you can't, you know, where to stop. You see, or people say it's unending reflection. It's just like it's just like it's just like a mystery after me. I said no, it's not. Because all the mysteries together still come down to a phenomenal thing, and something witnesses that. Don't say, but then what witnesses that? And what witnesses that? You know, and then it just goes mental. And that's a dif that's a difference when somebody is mental. They don't know how. They don't, they don't have wisdom. They just kind of you know just have this very clever mind. There's a difference between clever mind and wisdom. There used to be a group of people away, they call them the sophists, that's where the word sophistication comes from. And they used to just create arguments and con contradictions and stuff. Seem really clever, you know, like this. But they never got anywhere. They were just uh, they never got anywhere. And when I told you the story about the Buddha, that there was these people that were going around and challenging, you know, like say a philosopher or something like that, and you have you have a following, and they would go and challenge you, and then say, if I beat you, I, I, then you have to join me, and all your followers has to join me. So this um, this man was became very good at that. He used to, you know, challenge people who had some philosophy or some teaching, and then he would defeat them with uh, like uh, arguments. 
And then they'd have to say, okay, yes, you win, I can't answer that. And then they, they join him and he had a very big following. And they said that he, this man, came to the Buddha mm. and says, yes, I've heard you have the biggest following. And I challenge you to a contest of, um, you know, of, uh, to debate with you about uh, life. But if you lose, you and all your followers must follow me. And the Buddha said to him, Okay, but before we do that, he says, You are winning these things, but do you know why you are doing them? Have you found out why you are doing them? Have you found anything ultimate about with what you have done? And the man said, No, I have not found anything ultimate. And he says, I challenge, My challenge to you, you come and spend one year with me. After this, you may challenge me. And if you win, I will come and join you, when my followers will join you. Then when the man came, the Buddha says, Don't speak. And don't ask me any question. Just be here with me. He said, OK. And he stayed with the Buddha. And then after so long, he was first very restless because he said, I want to fight with him, I want to ask him. But I agreed not to, just to keep quiet. And then at the end of the year, he came and he bowed down in front of Buddha and he says, There is no need for me to try and challenge you because you have broken me completely. Uh, my mind is empty. I have nothing to challenge you with. I am completely you. You. You are the, the greatest winner because you have defeated me without using one single word. Because my mind is just completely collapsed. He became the devotee of Buddha. So sometimes the people who they just want to argue because they they, they feel they have space they can do this. And to create kind of conflict where there was no need for any, they themselves are restless, and they just uh, try to destroy the seeming peace of others. They're also an expression of consciousness, because consciousness plays the game of evil and the game of good very well, and it uses both things to somehow uh, refine itself, meaning somehow wake up, because it cannot find what is perfect. You can only drop what is imperfect, so that's called sleep. To drop sleep, you see. So these people they were called sophists, and I remember one thing I saw in one doctor's office in the hospital. It says the wise person speaks because they have something to say. The fool speaks. Because he has to say something. Mm-hmm. And so the one speaks because he has something to say. The other one speaks because he has to say something. He can't keep quiet. He's, 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 uh, the other one speaks because when he speaks, there's something flowers, something there's something. It's like a gift. He's offering something, an, an enrichment, an empowerment. But the other one speaks only to create noise and conflict. But still, he's needed because consciousness needs him as well. As a mirror to see, to see into his own own potential and to avoid it. So you learn from good and bad people. Tamasoma Jyoti Gamaya. Shanti, Shanti.